Hello everyone, welcome to this video tutorial on data mining. In today's class, we are going to discuss about hierarchical clustering techniques, which are one of the important category of clustering methods, which produces a set of nested clusters organized in the form of a hierarchical tree. So, a hierarchical clustering is often displayed graphically using a tree-like diagram called dendrogram, as you can see in the slide which displays both the cluster subcluster relationship and the order in which the clusters are merged in case of agglomerative clustering and in the order in which the clusters are splitted in case of divisive clustering algorithm okay so next we will see what are the strength of hierarchical clustering algorithm so if you remember the partition clustering algorithm or k means clustering algorithm in which we have to give the k as the number of input parameter in case of hierarchical clustering, we don't have to give the well, the cluster or the value of the number of cluster as an input parameter. So we do not have to assume any particular number of clusters. So in hierarchical clustering, any desired number of clusters can be obtained by cutting the dendrogram at the proper level. Another advantage of hierarchical clustering algorithm is that the hierarchical clustering can have the ability to handle different cluster si sizes or non-globular clusters can be extracted using hierarchical clustering methods. Okay, hierarchical clustering method also correspond to meaningful taxonomies. More generally, such hierarchical clustering algorithms are typically used because the underlying application, that is the creation of a taxonomy, requires a hierarchy. As you can see in the example of biological sciences, for example, in animal kingdom, we have a hierarchy. Fine. So, there have been some studies that also suggest that these algorithms can produce better quality clusters. But however, agglomerative cl hierarchical clustering algorithms are expensive in terms of their computation and storage requirements. Okay? So, the fact is that all merges are final can also cause trouble for noisy and higher dimensional data. Okay? So, these are the strengths and weaknesses of hierarchical clustering. So next we see what are the different types of hierarchical clustering methods. So hierarchical clustering methods can be divided into two main, main groups. One is your agglomerative hierarchical clustering and another is the divisive hierarchical clustering. So in agglomerative hierarchical clustering, we will start with the points as individual clusters and at each step we are going to merge the closest pair of clusters. So in hierarchical clustering algorithm, if there are five data points, then five data points will be considered as five clusters and each step we are going to merge two clusters until there is only one cluster remain. So what do you want? So this requires defining a notion of cluster proximity in case of agglomerative hierarchical clustering. In case of divisive hierarchical clustering, we will start with one all inclusive cluster and at each step split a cluster until only a singleton cluster of individual points remain. So in this case we need to decide which cluster to split at each step and how to do the splitting. So divisive clustering is opposite to the agglomerative clustering. In divisive clustering we will start with one cluster at a time and each step we are going to merge split the cluster until each cluster contains an individual point or it is a singleton cluster. So, but we will going to decide only agglomerated hierarchical clustering in this algorithm, in this particular video tutorial. So, if you see the basic agglomerative hierarchical clustering algorithm, as you can see in the pseudocode, the first step is to, we have to compute the proximity matrix. So, the compute proximity matrix, as you can see, the distance matrix can be computed using any of the distance measure that we have used, either Euclidean, Manhattan, Pearson. So you have to first compute the proximity matrix. Then we will start with by considering as individual points as clusters and successively merge the two clusters or the two closest clusters, only one cluster remains and at the same time, we are going to update the proximity matrix and this particular process will repeat until a single cluster remains. Okay? So, the key operations in the computation is the, in case of agglomerative hierarchical clustering is the computation of proximity between two clusters. So, different approaches for defining the distance between clusters distinguish the different algorithms. So, you can use 
any distance major to find out the proximity of two clusters let's see with an help of an example for example here there are 12 points since we are going to use agglomerative hierarchical clustering we are considering each 12 data as 12 clusters so there will be 12 clusters in one cluster one data point will be there so the proximity matrix will be p up p1 to p12 so it is a 12 by 12 matrix so since every individual point is considered as a cluster so what we'll do in the next step in the next step we are going to merge the two clusters suppose we are going to merge this we are going to merge this we are going to merge this or we are going to merge this these are the clusters which are very close to each other so after merging the clusters suppose there will be first there are 12 points 12 clusters now there are six clusters or five clusters so the proximity matrix was uh, earlier 12 by 12 now you have to there six you can see that there is five by five matrix so now you have to update the proximity matrix in this next iteration so in the next iteration again we are going to merge the two clusters which are closest to each other so c2 and c5 we are going to merge so again so you have to update the proximity matrix okay so like this you have to practice update the proximities the question is how we update the proximity matrix so is there any way to update the proximity matrix yes there are various ways by which you can update the proximity matrix as you can see the proximity matrix can be updated by using mean max group average distance between centroids or other methods driven by an objective function for example words methods to use squared error fine so we will discuss one by one Suppose in the mean approach, the mean approach is also known as the single link approach. Okay, so in the single link hierarchical clustering algorithm, what we will do, it it will define the proximity matrix as the cluster proximity or as the proximity between two closest points that are in different clusters. Or using gra graphical terms, we can say that the sort is, is between two nodes in different subset of nodes. So, if, if you are going to define the single link hierarchical clustering or mean hierarchical clustering, you have to define the proximity measure as the minimum distance between the two points which are in different clusters. Okay, so this is the mean or single link. In case of max, so max takes the proximity between the farthest two points as you can see these are the two farthest points in different clusters to be the cluster proximity max is also known as the complete link hierarchical clustering algorithm so group of, uh, max or complete link will define the proximity measure to be the farthest top proximity between the farthest two point in different clusters as the cluster proximity or using graphical terms you can say that the longest edge between the two nodes in different subset of nodes okay there are another method which is known as the group average method in case of group group average method it defines the cluster proximity to be the average pairwise proximity or you can see say that average length of edges of all pairs of points from different clusters as you can see we will take consider the distance between all the points and we will take the average and I will going to define the cluster proximity okay in the other case when we are using centroid the cluster proximity is commonly defined as the proximity between two cluster centroids okay so there but in this particular algorithm or video we are going to see how mean max and group average will work so in the next video hope you like this video thank you very much